So last night, I tried buying a couple books so that I could get rid of a gift card that I had gotten at Christmas. And you know how those things just kind of die on you if you don't use them. So I wanted to make sure I used it, but I uh, hadn't been hadn't decided on which books to get from it and I found that Mercier and Sperber who make this or wrote this paper in 2009 that I thought was really great about the reason for reason actually turned it into a book so I went to grab that and then I went to grab another one and it was on Indigo because this is Canada and typical e-retailer has like probably two dozen trackers going uh, or two dozen domains hooked in from JavaScript. And, you know, I run no script just as a rule, mainly because you just don't need that a lot of the time. But it's always a fun little exercise trying to figure out like, okay, you know, which ones of these things, you know, which ones of these domains do you need to turn on? so that the website actually works. And you know, it takes like usually four or five tries before you get there. And in this case, it was a little bit more, but it kind of reminded me of this experience that I had back in the day with Namecheap, you know, just re-up a domain or whatever. It turns out that they hook their checkout button through Google Analytics. So you can't, pay for their thing without having Google Analytics on. Now, an if statement, you know, if GA, do GA thing is all you need to fix that single line of code. I went to their, you know, support monkeys um, and mentioned this to them and they just said, well, you should probably just turn on GA. And I thought that was funny because, I mean, first of all, these people clearly don't know what they're talking about. They're just a accountability sync, which I thought was a good word that I heard recently. But, um, you know, what that tells you is that company policy is that they would rather the metrics than the sale, which I think is silly. But more to the point, the, you know, the fact that you can just sort of like tack on like some other domains, JavaScript, you know, don't get me like started about the security implications of that will actually wait. Yeah, do get me started about that. Turns out like a couple weeks ago, and I mean, I think this happened prior to this, but um, some Chinese company managed to get their hands on the domain polyfill.io. Now polyfill.io is not a thing that you need anymore because browsers update so like by themselves so regularly. But once upon a time, you know, it was a sort of useful shim for adding new JavaScript functionality to old browsers that didn't have it yet. And so you could, you know, use new JavaScript features or, you know, if you were developing a website, you could you know, be sure that the JavaScript would work. Turns out that uh, they uh, were using it to send out like spam pop up, whatever, but they could theoretically do anything with that. Now, JavaScript, there's not a heck of a lot in the way of like attack vectors with it on the regular, but you know, the uh, I think there was a guy in Egypt that got popped from a uh, JavaScript injection uh, of an exploit. And, you know, these things show up every once in a while. It's just an exploit in the, in the VM on uh, Safari, I think it was. And so, you know, what you're doing when you are piling on like two dozen domains is you're basically just saying like, oh yeah, we trust these guys implicitly forever. And we're gonna like make you trust them too. And I think that's just, just a little bit on the dodgy side. But it's also just like bad because like, not only are you trusting them, you know, to be secure, you're also trusting them to actually be online. You know, what if their thing is down and your website depends on it for some, and it just breaks in a dodgy way that is like unobvious to the extent that like just links and buttons just don't work. Do you click on them, nothing happens. like. 
that's going to generate a lot of support calls. Like that's just going to be expensive to deal with. So I mean, the question I have is like, how did it just get this bad? Um, you know, especially when you see like websites that are, you know, that list like how big, you know, other websites are getting like, you know, four megabytes of JavaScript and, you know, three instances of freaking jQuery and two of Vue and three of React and so on. And it's like just this pile of muck that is modern web development. And it's just really messed up. And I mean, I think the, the reason why I, I think this is important though is because as we are moving toward memory safe languages, Rust and Go at the system level, but also like Swift and Java or Kotlin or whatever for like phone apps, like the opportunities for stuff like buffer overflows is just not there anymore. And so I think the attention is going to go to the supply chain. And especially since the uh, package repositories are dodgy as hell, you know, NPM is dodgy as hell. But like, you know, a lot of these uh, package repositories do not have any meaningful safeguards on what is uh, in them. You know, and there's just kind of like, you know, I think there was something about the, the Chrome web store, the, the um, you know, browser add-ons for Chrome is like, oh, we only have, we're pretty sure we're 99% malware free. And it's like, yeah, but the other 1% represents, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of, of browser add-ons. So what the hell? And the thing about supply chain rather than stuff like memory corruption is that you don't have to like do any weird stuff as a rule. You can just write code that does what you want. Like you don't even have to, you know, do anything weird. And there was also, oh yeah, the XZ vulnerability the other like, couple months ago or whatever, that was supply chain. They did, uh, uh, social engineering on the on the maintainer for like two years prior to injecting the vulnerability into there so like there is there's got to be just landmines acres of this stuff sitting around waiting to blow up so yeah it's it's not gonna get any better it's gonna get worse anyway i'm gonna finish my coffee